This is our Scrivener for Dummies, or our Scrivener for Dum Dums, if that's copyrighted. <laughs> and welcome to my channel. My name is Rayleigh Bradshaw and I am a writer of new adult historical fiction, currently working on my debut novel, Untamable. and I have gotten a lot of questions lately about Scrivener. I actually just started using Scrivener and so I know there are some people out there who are Scrivener geniuses and they've been using Scrivener for a long time and they know all the tips and tricks and all of that. If you want some more advanced tips and tricks on how to make Scrivener work for you, this is not the video for you. If, however, you are a Scrivener newbie and easily overwhelmed by computers and computer programs and things that look scary and new, this is the video for you. Because in this video, I am going to be taking Scrivener, something that can look really scary and overwhelming and intimidating, and I'm going to dumb it down as much as possible to make it easy to understand for other dum-dums like me who take a long time to learn things and usually avoid things. It took me a really long time to start using Scrivener because I remember I tried it for the first time back in high school. I must have been 15 or 16 or something like that. I just remember thinking there were so many bells and whistles in it that it was confusing for me. And at the time, to be honest, I didn't need any of those things because I had no editing process. I had no revisions process. I was just writing it and releasing it to the world as it was being written. I didn't need anything special. And so for me, something like Google Docs, or I think I was using Word at the time, those were enough for me. Now, however, as I'm trying to prepare my current work in progress for publication, there's a lot more that goes into it. I have some processes that, to be honest, start to feel kind of complicated and sometimes I need to shuffle chapters around and it can get overwhelming. I just found that using Google Docs alone was not fitting all of my needs or rather it was making things more complicated than they needed to be. I won NaNoWriMo last year and received a 50% off coupon for Scrivener so I thought now's the time to try it and so I did and I am loving it. Let me me tell you there definitely is a learning curve but I'm going to help you through that this is our Scrivener for dummies or our Scrivener for dum dums if that's copyrighted <laughs> first I'm going to explain to you why it looks so scary to us and then I'm going to explain to you why it's actually not as scary as it looks this is probably going to be part one of a series that I will continue to update as I learn how to do more on Scrivener but for the time being I'm just going this is going to be pretty much as basic as it gets how to understand Stan Scrivener and how to use it on the simplest level. So first of all, why does Scrivener look so scary to us? So when I started using Scrivener, my husband was like, oh, this is just like a back-end coding thing. So it's it looks scary to us because it looks like what a computer coder would use to code. And to us, we're like, no, 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 I, I can't do that because I can't speak that language and it looks scary. Now, this is why it's not actually scary, because it's not actually code. <laughs> so this is the basic idea of Scrivener. If you had your entire novel in a binder like this, what could you do? It would make it a lot easier to shuffle things around. So, for example, this is where my husband keeps all of his music stuff, by the way. Let's say you've got chapter one here. You've got chapter two here, chapter three here, etc., so on and so forth. Let's say as you are going through revisions or edits, you realize, huh, actually chapter two and chapter three need to be reversed. So then you can just open your binder, take chapter two out like this, and then, you know, switch it with chapter three. It just makes shuffling things around a little bit easier and you can see it all laid out in front of you. And then at the same time, you can also have in your binder um, a, a whole section on your characters where you keep all the information about your characters pretty much everything you ever want for your book um, pictures of your care of what your characters look like maps for me because I write a lot of historical fiction I do a lot of research online and sometimes I'll find documents that I'm like it took me forever to find this document I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it again so I want to save that link so maybe that's something that I would put in my binder so I have everything I need for my story all in one place and it's easy to shuffle around as I need or I can just if I'm like oh this whole chapter needs to go I'll just whoosh, take the whole chapter out of the binder it's not in my binder anymore don't have to worry about it 
So that is the basic idea of Scrivener. It makes it possible to do all of the things you would actually do with a physical binder, but it does it digitally for you. So with that understanding, we're actually going to dive into Scrivener together and I'm going to show you how this works on a really basic level that's actually not as scary as it first appears. All right, so when we first open Scrivener, this is what it's going to look like. And maybe this looks intimidating because it's dark and what you might traditionally be used to will be something super bright like um, Google Docs or Microsoft Word or something like that. So this is just gonna look a little bit different. That's actually not that scary. The first thing we have here is they have an interactive tutorial just right there front and center. It is a little bit time consuming. I think it takes about two hours to go through the entire thing, but it is very comprehensive. It covers everything. Um, you can take it at your own pace and I actually highly recommend that you do this tutorial. However, this video is just kind of to help you get started and to make Scrivener not look so scary and for you to see kind of the potential that it has. So they also have video tutorials on YouTube that you can watch here that are also super helpful. They're a lot more fast paced than my video is going to be. So again, if you're watching this and you're like, okay, this is way too slow for me, apparently I'm not a dum-dum, then, <laughs> then I would highly recommend these YouTube videos. Okay, so if we're going to be starting a new project, we're gonna go over here on the left and they do have templates that you can use for writing a book. They've got a novel template, they've got a short story, they also have screenplay templates and things like that. I personally don't wanna use a template. I want to be able to create the story my own way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a blank one here. And just for the sake of this video, I'm going to pretend that I'm writing a mashup of Goldilocks and the Three Bears and Little Red Riding Hood, okay? So I'm gonna call this Goldie Hood, and I'm going to create that. Okay, so this is my brand new project. This is my book. This is kind of the back end code for my book turning out exactly as I want it. So I can start off here. I made my cursor really big so that you can see it and it's not too small. Um, so I can start off here and just start writing straight away, especially if I'm a pantser maybe, and I'll just, you know, Goldilocks hated her sister, Little Red. Okay, so I'll start my document there. So the way that I like to format my books and the way I like to plan them, because I am very much a plotter, is that I actually like to separate my book into four parts and then break the parts down into chapters and the chapters down into scenes. So that's how I'm going to start arranging my book. So I'm going to go over here to the left hand side of the screen and this is my binder. So this long piece right here. That's the binder. That is kind of like your book of contents where you can see everything you need that's in your binder, whether that's information about your characters or your actual chapters or whatever, what have you. So first, I'm going to rename my draft Goldie Hood, because this is my book, okay? I'm going to make my four parts for my book. So I'm gonna head all the way down here to the bottom of my binder and click this little icon that looks like a folder. And I'm actually gonna click that four times. So these are the four parts of my book. And just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna title them part one, part two, part three, and part, ooh, let's keep it, part three, and part four, okay? So now that I have my four parts created down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take here this document that I f initially started for my draft and I'm going to say, okay, this is the very beginning. So it's going to go under chapter or it's going to go under part one. You can see this little blue line will show me where it's going and I want it in part one. Okay. So we've got this scene here. Let's say this first scene of the book, or let's say I've got an entire document. Let's say that I know that I want to have three chapters in part one of my book. So what I'm going to do to arrange that is I'm going to, with, with my document highlighted, I'm gonna go down to this little folder again and create a new folder. I'm gonna create three folders. 
And as you can see by the indentation here, these three folders are actually inside the folder that is part one, okay? So these are three chapters that are part of part one. And I'm going to move this document right here and put it inside the first folder. And I'm gonna title this first folder, chapter one. So now this document has become a scene within chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three, okay? Okay, so now we've got some writing in here. So let's say I want to break this scene up. Let's say I want to break this document up into scenes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cursor here where I want the next scene break to be. And then I'm gonna go up here to where it says documents, click documents, and I'm going to say split, split at section. Okay, so now if we go over here to the binder, we can see that right where I had it split, it's created a separate scene. So now these scenes, I can see them alone, one at a time like this, or if I want to see them both together, I can just click on this chapter one folder and it will show me there on that dotted line, that's where it's a new scene. And that will already be, it'll just make formatting the whole document a lot easier when it comes time to send this to an editor or beta readers or whatever I want to do with it, okay? So you can see every scene in the chapter as a whole when you have chapter highlighted like this, or you can see each scene on its own just like that, okay? Now let's say as I'm working through my novel, I want to move this scene to chapter two. All I have to do is click on it and drag it down to chapter two, okay? Now let's say we'll put this back and let's say I want my second scene to actually come before my first scene. I can do the same thing. I can just drag it and move it. So this just makes it really easy to shuffle scenes around. It makes it really easy to, to cut a document in half and split it into a new scene, to move a scene from one chapter to the other, like that. Let's say you're one of those people who really likes to use sticky notes and shuffle scenes around on sticky notes before you actually do it in your document. So I'm gonna go over here and click on chapter one. And then I'm gonna go up to this little icon that looks like four squares. And I'm gonna click on that and that's just gonna change the format or the layout of what I'm seeing. So instead of seeing it as a document, now I'm gonna see these scenes as if they were kind of like little post-it notes or, you know, little, little cards on a cork board. And I can shuffle these around however I want. So if I want this scene to come before this one or vice versa, this especially is helpful when you have a lot of scenes that you're working with. You can also do the same thing by shuffling chapters around. So, so I'm actually going to take my cursor over here to the binder and I want to see the entire book as a whole or I want to just see all the chapters in part one. So I'm going to click on part one and now it's going to show me all of my chapters. So I can also shuffle my chapters around if I need to. I don't know when you'd ever need to do that but who knows. Okay and this is going to change the whole document for you. So it just makes it easier to move things around in my opinion. And then if I want to see the entire book as a whole and not just each part, I will just go up to here to Goldie Hood or Goldie Hold because I spelled that wrong. Let's fix that right now. I wonder how many of you were irritated by that the whole time. Goldie Hood. There we go. Okay, so now I can see the entire book, all of the parts. Okay, and then another thing so I know what's in each chapter, I can actually click on this here or double click on it rather. And I can give myself a little summary of what happens in each chapter so I can just see it at a glance. So in chapter one, um, we meet Goldilocks and Red Riding Hood. In chapter two, mother, mother sends them into the woods. In part three, um, Red Hood meets a wolf in the woods and Goldilocks finds a cozy cottage. Goldilocks enlists the help 
of the three friendly bears to free her sister from the wolf. Okay, I know this sounds like a really dumb book. <laughs> Bear with me, I'm making this up as I go. Okay, so now I know what happens in each of these parts. Um, these are going to be some long chapters with not a lot in them, but whatever. Then in the chapters, I can also write a little synopsis of the chapters. So in chapter two, let's say, um, Goldilocks finds a magical flower. Chapter three, she's allergic to it. I don't know. I know this is dumb, but you get the point. Okay, so I can write a really brief synopsis of what happens in each of these chapters so I can see it. And maybe um, I want to change things around as I'm editing or revising and I decide maybe she already knows that she's allergic to this flower. So maybe this scene actually, this chapter comes before this chapter. Or maybe not, maybe there's no reason to move my chapters around. But I have scenes in chapter 2 that I do want to switch around. Or maybe there's a scene in chapter 2 that I want to be in chapter 3. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to go to chapter two. This is the chapter where she finds out that she's allergic to these flowers. And then in chapter three, this is the scene where she finds the flower. Okay. So maybe I want to say she finds the flower before she finds out she's allergic to it. So I'm going to just shuffle these around like that. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple. Um, so this is just the most basic, basic way that I have been using Scrivener. I found it really, really helpful in going from my completed first draft to actually revising and editing. It just has made the whole process of snipping and shuffling things around a lot easier for me. So that's all I'm going to go over today. There are also other features that I can go over such as creating character profiles within Scrivener, attaching photos or other links to information to Scrivener, doc Scrivener documents so you can see it all here in your binder all at once. If you guys are interested in seeing those and you found this video helpful, please let me know down below and I would be more than happy to film some more of these Scrivener for Dum Dum tutorials. <laughs> but for now, please let me know if you found this helpful. I hope that at least a couple of you might have. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Would you come take a walk with me? We'll cross over the mountain. I love you, I'm so glad you love me too And I wrote this song for you